Okay, for this review video, we're going to go over time of death determination and what we covered in class. Key thing you need to know about time of death is the glacier equation and how to use it. So uh, for this equation, it is 98.4 minus the measured temperature at the crime scene, and they either measure the liver temperature, the brain temperature, or the rectal temperature. We're going to divide by 1.5, and then that gives us the hours since that person died. The 1.5 here is actually key because it means that the body cools 1.5 degrees per hour after death. Okay, until it reaches the ambient temperature. So, I do a couple example problems. It says body temperature at the scene was at 86.4 at 8 p.m. So, we do our equation 98.4 minus 86.4 divided by 1.5. If you type that into your calculator, hold on, I gotta pull mine up. So, we do 98.4 minus. 86.4, it equals 12, divided by 1.5, and we get 8 hours. So it's been 8 hours since that person died. So if you think of your clock, you have noon, 3, 6, and 9. So if we're at 8 o'clock right here, and we have to go back 8 hours... We end up with the person died at 12 p.m. noon. Okay, on this next example, it says body temperature at the scene was 93.9 degrees Fahrenheit at 1 p.m. So we do 98.4 minus 93.9 divided by 1.5. So 98.4 minus... 93.9, we get 4.5 divided by 1.5, and we end up with 3 hours since death, and this was at 1 p.m., so again, if you have your clock, this is 12, 3, 6, 9, if we are at 1 p.m. when we found it, go back an hour, 2, 3, so this would be at 10 a.m. would be when the body actually died. Um, one quick thing before we move on to interpreting the graphs. You can only use the, the body or the glacier equation in an indoor environment, and we'll talk about why in just a second. But also with the glacier equation, all you need is the temperature that the person died or that we measure at the crime scene. We don't need any other information. We just need that temperature of what it was at the crime scene. So when you're looking at the graph, we did this in class. Um, we have body temperature on our y-axis and time on our x-axis. We have three different temperatures here. We have our hot, ambient temperature, environment, room temperature, and then cold. And so every time we see is that the body temperature is going to reach the ambient temperature, and then it's normally going to stay pretty constant. Okay, that's especially going to work for our room temperature because we have things like heating and air conditioning that keep our room temperature the same versus if the body is outside in a hot water environment, it's going to go up to reach the, hot, the ambient temperature and then let's say at night it cools back down so the body would cool back down and the next day if it gets hot again, the body is going to rise back up. So the key thing with body temperature is body temperature either rises or falls until it reaches the outside temperature or the ambient temperature and then it follows that trend. So if it's outside in a cold or a hot environment, it's going to follow that trend based on the day and how the temperature changes throughout the day. If it's inside, it's going to fall to the room temperature and then it's going to pretty much stay constant. And that's why we can use the, the glacier equation with room temperature because it stays constant. If it didn't stay constant, like in the cold or the hot, then it's too variable. We don't know. We have to use other factors like using bugs, using decay, anything like that in order to be able to figure out what time that person died.